Hi and welcome to a new video from TMS Software. I'm Holger. Today I would like to introduce you to a new feature that was introduced lately into the TMS WebCore framework. And the title is missing right now because as it is, as I've seen with many Delphi developers, if I just mention the topic, they immediately shut off and say, oh, I don't need this. I haven't used this in the past, so I'm not going to use it now. So please bear with me after this brief, very brief introduction about the topic and give the example a chance. And you might see, hey, this is just what I've needed in the past and never looked at. So here we go. So welcome to unit testing with TMS Web Core. And as a Delphi developer with unit, we think of something right away. Unit testing, Pascal unit. No, it doesn't have anything to do with Pascal units. It actually refers to units of source code. And units of source code, if you think of object-oriented programming, it can be a form, class, it can be a method, a procedure, a web service, API, encapsulation, everything is considered a unit in your source code. But going back to the programming principles, it means it is a function or a procedure Whereas a function returns a value that you expect to do something and return a certain value. And that is what unit testing is all about. You build tests with expected results. And if your function does no longer return a certain result, something is at odds. Why did unit testing get such a bad rap in the Delphi community? Honestly, I don't know. But if you look on Amazon, it yields more than 500 titles on the subject but very few are for Delphi. Unit testing is something that is mandatory in other professions. For example, if you think of an electrician, an electrician has to test a switch cabinet before deploying the solution to the public. Everything is tested and testing is mandatory. Something like that doesn't exist for software development, but I can assure you, if you deploy a software, and there is an issue, there will be liability. So unit testing is something to think about. A few considerations, what you can do to include unit tests in your deployment. Run your unit tests before any release. So you're certain that all your functions still work the way they should. This is especially useful, and this is like things do change, that you think won't change. For example, there's a new Delphi version with a new framework. So things might have changed slightly. And just think about Unicode, the move from 32-bit and 64-bit. If you had unit tests, how much easier it would have been. And then real-world changes caused by, for example, the reunification of Germany in 1990. Zip codes or postal codes changed from four digits to five. So if you had functions that checked if a zip code was valid, they would have sorted out the now valid five digit code. So you had to make changes, which you would have found immediately using unit testing. And then the year 2000, dates usually use two digits for the year, not four. So these are all things that were not foreseeable. And that is something I wanna to say to every developer, do not assume that you can predict the future because we can only assess what is current right now. And we don't know how the Delphi language is going to develop in the future. We don't know how the world is going to develop in the future. So writing unit tests actually makes you a better developer to be more prepared for all these variables that we have to cope with every day. EMS Web Core unit testing runs in the browser, so you are testing the real thing. Function results can be easily evaluated. You can even look into asynchronous operations if they work the way that you want them to. This makes API and web service endpoint development really easy because you can unit test it before you let it out into the public. And you also have full access to the DOM, the document object model. And What's even better, you get a great user interface for testing, and that's exactly what we're going to look at now. So here's the example. In order to do unit testing with TMS Web Core, TMS provides a new project template. So to get started, select File, New, 
other, go to the TMS Web Core category called TMS Web, and there you find the TMS Web Unit Test application. The project created does not come with a form, instead it comes with a unit testing class. You can register as many classes for a unit test as you want. So the template gets you started to register at least one class. It also provides one unit test. The unit test is marked with a test custom attribute and the testing class is marked with a test fixture attribute. Looking at the example provided by TMS, it's pretty straightforward. It tests the correct functionality of the int to string function, which we all know. Int to string converts an integer value into a string. So this unit test here tests if the int to string result of 42 matches the string 42. And see what we do here. We call assert, and assert gives us all possible unit tests we can do. We can test for equality, we can test if something is not equal, and we can test if something is empty, false, not empty, and so on. There is many overloads available for many different types, but also for generic types. So if you run the unit test, you see that instead of the form of an application, you get the user interface to run your unit tests. On the left, the class tMyTestClassUnit2 with its one method for the unit test. We just click run, and the method, of course, runs successfully because our into string method works. The free Pascal team didn't make a mistake implementing into string. The number 42 results in the string 42. Let's tinker with this a little bit. Like, let's say into string 42 were misfunctioning, okay? And you expect the value 24 instead, which is not the real value, but this is what you test for you. So you expect into string 42 to return the string 24. You run this again. And of course, this is going to fail, but I want you to see how the user interface looks if you run a test, if it fails. So you start it, and now you get that the test into string failed. The expected result is 24, and the result is 42. So the method correctly returns 42, but you expected 24. So this is where the mismatch is, and this is when you start to look into your source code what is going wrong. Also note that there is a difference between error and fail. The test fails, but there are no exceptions, so there is no error in your code, it's just a failed test. So there's a slight distinction there. As this example is just so basic, I would like to invite you to follow me up and implement another unit test, which has a little bit more relevance for something that you might build in the future. What we are going to build is, and let me remove the default ones, that's what we start with. Also note here that in the initialization section of the unit, the testing runner registers the class for the unit test. So that is something you have to do manually if you add more classes. But just as you can create a new project with one testing class, or formally called a test case, you can also add more test cases to an existing project using file new, other, TMS web, and then you find here not only the TMS web unit test application, you also find a TMS web test case. Compared to creating a new VCL project or a new TMS web core project and adding forms, here you add test cases. The function we want to write a test case for calculates the sum of all digits in a string. Let's say you have the string one, two, three, four. The result of the function is one plus two plus three plus four. And that's the, what we will implement and our unit test checks if our function works correctly. So we need a procedure, procedure, test, sum of digits. And of course we need to mark it with test because it is the method of a test case. Control shift C to implement it. And what do we have to do in order to test it? Well, we can just do a couple of assumptions. So for example, we could check assert r equal. And what is supposed to be equal, for example, 10 
is supposed to be the sum of digits of our function that we're going to implement 9, 1. Because 9 plus 1 equals 10. So that is what the function needs to return. Also, we want to make sure that the failure case is being assessed. For example, our sum of digits function is always going to return minus 1 if one of the characters inside of the string is invalid, is not a digit. For example, our, we test this with r equal minus 1 sum of digits. For example, 9a1, because there is an invalid character in there, a is obviously not a digit, so our function is supposed to return minus 1. So you can not only test the cases when the function works correctly, you also are supposed to test what happens if invalid values are being passed to the function. Of course, you can increase this with exception handling and all that sort of stuff, but that will go beyond the scope of this short demonstration. Of course, what we still need to do is we need to implement sum of digits. And this is certainly something where very skilled people can find a very optimized version that performs well. And uh, I'm just going to do a very simple iterative version of sum of digits that I'm quite sure experts will be able to optimize. But that's not the point of this demonstration. So function sum of digits. and I intentionally do not make this part of the test class. I make it here in Delphi. I can do it very easily. I make it part of the unit. But of course, this would be a function in some sort of other unit that you want to test, or it would be part of another class that you want to test. I'm just going to add it to the unit as this. And always remember, unit testing does not refer to a Pascal unit. It refers to a unit in your source code. So sum of digits is going to take a string of type string, and it is going to return an integer. And I need the variable L digit, which is going to store the current digit that I'm adding. And I need a counter that iterates over the string. What I'm going to do is begin X. I start with the first position, and then I'm going to say while X smaller equal to length of a string do begin if not try string to end try string to end is a function that helps us to work with cases that we don't want to throw an exception right away if our string to end doesn't work so we can use try string to end and the value that we want to try to convert into an integer is a string comma position x and one. We can no longer use a string and then square brackets because we're in Unicode world where we no longer can assume that one byte is actually one character. Just wanted to point that out. So L digit is the target. So try string to and actually takes two parameters. One is a string that is supposed to be converted into an integer. And for us, it's one digit. And the out parameter here, quite a few Delphi developers are not used to out parameters. It's something that comes from the C world, I would say. This is the target. So string to end does not return the value. It stores it in L digit. And it also returns a Boolean value if the conversion was successful or if there was an error. So we can simply say yes, if it is not successful, the result of our function is going to be minus one and leave the loop, the while loop. Otherwise, result is result plus our digit that we just converted. And of course, we also need to increment x. If you want to be on the safe side, also type result equals zero to have an initial value for result. And this function returns the sum of digits of a string. At least we think so. Let's run the unit test. We get the same user interface, just that now our test case consists of test sum of digits, rerun, and we get two times a check mark so both of our tests are successful.
That means our function does exactly what it's supposed to do. It returns the sum and minus one if it is incorrect. So let's do something that is very common in programming. For example, you check in changes into the versioning system and you make an change that was unintentional. For example, I initialize now with result equals one. So we have an offset somewhere. This is of course very, very constructed, but these are the things that happen sometimes. And now run this again. So somebody touched your sum of digits and your unit test now checks before you release your product to the customer. Is everything still working as expected? And boom test sum of digits so you have a failure because you expected 10 and the result is 11 so you're off by one and guess what you found a mistake that crept in somehow before you delivered your software to the customer hopefully this showed you how useful unit testing can be and how easy it is to be applied to your tms web core projects remember tms web core projects are applicable for desktop applications with TMS MyLeaders. They're available for mobile platforms because web applications run on all mobile devices. And of course, this applies to TMS Web Core for Visual Studio Code, which is also available for your TMS Web Core development. To dive deeper into the subject, surf to web.tmssoftware.com.